What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another Team Mom 2, which aired on Monday, January 28th on MTV. The show starts off with Devon, and he's taking Nova to a place for fun called, I think it's Monkey Joe's. <laughs> and um, so it's Addie's first day of school, and she enjoyed herself as well as her twin, well, as well as twin, Allie, even though she couldn't take a wheelchair because remember last week it was a problem because the bus wouldn't allow Leo to put the wheelchair on the bus when um Allie was going to school. So she had to drive all the way, which she could have might as well have just driven the kids to school that day since she had to take the wheelchair to school. So um, she's looking to getting a lawyer to sit in the next IEP meeting to see if they can make some changes. So it seems like Chelsea has gone into labor because as she was sitting out on the porch with the family, she noticed that she felt a little dampness on her clothes. So we shall see if it's almost about that time. Hurricane Florence has hit North Carolina pretty hard and Janelle, unfortunately, um, it affected her house and um, it damaged her home. They lost power as well as Barbara. But Barbara, I don't think it damaged her house. I know that she mentioned that she evacuated. She left and probably went to stay at a hotel or wherever she went to stay. Um, Janelle also went to go and stay with them. So Janelle says that Nathan's mom called her and asked, can Kaiser come and stay with her because she has a bigger place until Janelle is able to get back in her home. And Janelle was like, um, no, he's going to stay with me for now. I think it's a good idea that he just stays with me. And I mean, she should have known that she was going to turn that off or down, especially with Nathan trying to get Kaiser. So um, it was a big disagreement about that. But anyway, Caitlin took the kids out for Caitlin took the kids out for ice cream and cake. Then later on that day, she's back at home burning sage, talking about she's trying to get rid of negative energy. And I'm like, girl, you are the negative energy. She said that um she has been with Chris like she's always been with Chris off and on. And I was saying to myself, it's funny that she's mentioning Chris more than anything now, like. So is he going to be on a show? Some Is he going to like show his face at some point throughout this see this out? I'm so sorry. Throughout this season's episodes or whatever, or is she just going to be talking about him? Is she going to be more vocal about him? You know, is they going to be back together or whatever? So she was saying, even though they break up, they get back together. The breakup or the breakup are usually caused by him cheating. She said, but she always finds her way back to him. And she was like, I just can't find my way around being so addicted to chaos. And it's been like this, like on and off forever. But she said that um, as long as he's consistent with seeing looks, she's fine with it. And I'm like, well, if you like it, then I love it. I mean, um. That just don't sound like good for a person to to settle to be with someone, even if they like you going back and forth with somebody who has clearly cheated on you, showed you that they don't care, constantly disrespect you. That says a lot about the person who deals with it. So Devon um, is finally spending more quality time with Nova and Brianna. She seems a bit more happier than usual about that. Devon has also gotten his apartment and he wants to take Nova over to see the apartment. But at the same time, uh, Brianna said that she kind of don't want Nova to get too caught up in wanting to be there a lot or something to that. I'm like, girl, so do you want him to be in a life or you don't? The only way I can see her opposing that is if she have a feeling that something is going on over at his apartment. You know, well, a child shouldn't be in that environment. I understand that. But other than that, what's wrong with her spending time over at her dad's house? I mean, and it seems like that's something that she would want. I don't see what the problem would be. Um, Brianna should just want to kind of let that happen. 
That'll be good for Nova. And it'll be good for Devon. So Chelsea's on the way to the hospital to see if it's a false alarm or is it the real thing. On the way to the hospital, she's having contractions back to back. And Cole is getting so excited. And he's holding her hand, driving fast. And he's making her more nervous. I'm like, dude, calm down so she can stay calm. <laughs> she's the one in labor, not you. Or she's the one having contractions. So Leah is over at her boyfriend's house and she's telling him about the attorney and um, having one sit in the IEP meeting for Allie's special need assistance. So she's speaking on a phone with an advocate person who can kind of tell her what she needs to do as far as making sure that Allie gets what she needs. And so the advocate pretty much assured her that they will work as hard as they can to... um. Look out for the best interests of Allie. Her boyfriend tells her, if there's anything you need me to do, just let me know and I'll be there for you. And she's like, oh, babe, you're the best. And I'm like, oh, that moment, it just seemed like they was just so phony and disconnected. Like, they cannot convince me that they are a, like a legit couple. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it when I see them two together. Like, they just don't go together. And not because he's so much older than her. It's just like they just don't go together. I just don't see them two together. So Caitlin is talking to one of the producers on how it's been dealing with her mother over the years and her substance abuse. Talking about her mother's substance abuse with drinking and that she's never met Lux and stuff. And she said she can even remember the times when she was looking for her mom and she would she would know the places where her mom would be late at night. She knew the phone numbers by heart as a teenager. And she would have to call all of these places. And they would know that it's her calling around looking for their mom. So she said that she's, she's just trying to figure out how to have a relationship with her mother without being angry. So she wants to meet up with Tyler to talk to him because he can relate to that and we know that from seeing him on Team Mom, like him and uh, Caitlin was one of the first two of the young um, Team Mom parents that we've seen that dealt with parents and substance abuse, whether it was drugs or alcohol. So Janelle and Barbara took the kids to a pumpkin patch and the producer mentioned that uh, David had texted her and he was like, I'm going to ruin filming this season if y'all continue to exclude me out of my kids life I'm like what makes them think they trying to exclude him you excluded yourself when you decided to do things that clearly went against you know the the um the show's rules and stuff and so they fired you and they had every every right to fire you so stop trying to make it look like somebody is trying to keep you away from your kids while janelle is filming i mean this dude here i just don't know with him so um then Janelle, she starts trying to fake laugh it off, talking about well, he was just plain. He was just um, he was just mad about something else. He was pissed off about something else, and it just made it seem like he was mad at you or something. She was saying, and anyway, so the producer was like, "Well, I'm glad I didn't respond to him. I just ignored the text. I didn't respond to him about it." And you can tell this whole scene with Barbara and Janelle is something that the producers probably wanted to put together. Probably to save Janelle's job because we know that she didn't just make this huge turnaround when just last season, the way she was, just no contact with her mom. She just completely cut her mom off. Her mom didn't even go to the wedding or none of that. So now all of a sudden they just so lovey dovey, a close mother and daughter relationship we'll be seeing this season. I mean, it's fine with me. I want to see that, but I will hope that it's real and not just for the cameras. So, but, um, if they are getting along, that's good. though. So it's Nova's first day of first grade and she's crying as the teacher is explaining her assignment. And then, I'm sorry for that, um, interruption, y'all. Brianna and her mom left. Brianna's mom was like, oh, poor Nova, she's having separation anxiety. And I'm like, yeah, because she's always under her mama, which is why she should consider letting her go and stay over at Devon sometime. Because if that's all she know is Devon, her mom, or Brianna, 
or her aunt or Brittany, you know, or Shirley, she's going to always have these tearful goodbyes every time these, the main characters in her life leave away from her, you know. So let her leave sometime and go and stay over with her dad or, at, you know, at her cousin's house or I don't know. I can't tell her how to be with her child, but this is why she is like that. Because she's always at home under the same people and she's not used to being around different family members or whatever. So Caitlin has invited Tyler and Caitlin Caitlin has invited Tyler and Caitlin to her brought to her podcast. And they are guests on the show. They're gonna be discussing how they were dealing with their parents and substance abuse and um stuff like that and just kind of help her I guess just give her advice on how to deal with her mom in the future because I know she want to have a relationship with her mom so that her mother could meet her kids also so Chelsea made it to the emergency room and it turns out to be a false alarm and um so she's heading back home but everything is fine with the baby so now it's 33 weeks and counting down to her big arrival. So Nova had a good first day at school. She's happy. And um, Brianna asked her how she feel about staying at her dad's house sometime. And she was like, like you just seen her face light up. So I'm glad that she have considered letting her stay over with Devon. Then at the end of the show, there's like this recording that the producers didn't film of Janelle crying as she's calling 911. She also gives a report that David has assaulted her and he's he's hurt her shoulder, her collarbone. She mentioned that um he had been drinking and all that kind of stuff. And that recording kind of gave me chills. Because as much as I have questioned Janelle's emotional crying scenes on the show, that part really made me believe that he really did hurt her because she was even crying differently than she used to. She couldn't even really catch a breath. And it was so sad. So the operator was going to go ahead on and send out um, the police to her home. And so that pretty much concludes my recap for tonight's show. If you all enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And thank you for watching.